And welcome to your session 17. I must just apologize for last week, Wednesday. Oh, I was so busy that I forgot about our class because I was preoccupied with other things as well. So, uh, no worries. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, but we are still on track for you to be able to submit your assignment for because now we're working towards your assignment four. So <clears throat> today we're going, we're going to continue with confidence intervals. Like I said, we're going to split it into three sections. So we already covered the two. Today is the other section. And then because today's ses session will be, uh, the content will be short, we're then going to move into doing a lot of other exercises just to give you different perspective in terms of how the questions are posed in the um, exam as well as if you get those kind of questions in the assignment as well so that it can assist um, and then next week we will do hypothesis testing so from wednesday uh, the three sessions that will follow up will be doing hypothesis testing We'll also split it into three sections uh, so that we can do hypothesis testing for the mean when the standard deviation is known and when it's unknown. And then we do for the proportion and then we come back again before the final submission of your assignment just to do a lot of activities relating to confidence interval and also hypothesis testing so that you are ready to submit your assignment for. So let's duck in into today's uh, session. Do you have any comments, question or query before we start? Uh, I just have one. Um, where can I find an update to the T, T table? Uh, I've been looking for it, but I'm struggling to find the correct one. Uh, do you have a past exam paper on? Only 2019s, but it doesn't match the one you have. Uh, it doesn't match the one that I'm using. Yeah, because you're using 20, 2020s one. No, then it, it's fine because some exam in the exam paper, I think they left it at three decimals and you will find that also in some textbooks, they left it at three decimals and then others are at four decimals. So you can use the one that you have. If it's three decimals, then it's fine. You can still use that. They are the same. It's just that my one is in four decimal, and I think I'm using the tutorial, tutorial letter 101. I'm not sure if in your or in your tutorial letter letters anywhere that are published on my UNISA. If you do have uh, the the tables in one of the tutorial letters. If not, then it's fine. You can still use the one at the back of your past exam paper or at or at the back of your prescribed book if they do have a T table. Otherwise, I think there is a T table in your study guide as well. You just need to check. In, in mm. in I, check the, I check the study guide. I, mm, I didn't find it. There is no table, mm -hmm. okay. So, but yeah, you can use the one that you have. Um, okay, okay. Let, let me see how it goes with this one I have printed up and take it from there. Okay. Thank you. So as long as it's a three, this, it, um, it, it's called critical values of T's. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go there. As long as it's called critical values of T, whether it's three decimals or four decimals, it will look exactly the same. It's just that if it's three decimal, then you won't have. So, for example, if I'm looking at this value um, where it's one degrees of freedom, one and 0 0.10, the, on your one, it will say 3.078. Yes, state yes, of seven, seven. And mine and also so starts. Rounded, yeah, they would have rounded it off. Mm, mine also starts at 0 0.10 and not 0 0.25 on top. Zero. Mm. At the top, mm -hmm. it starts at zero, zero comma one zero, and you and don't have zero comma two five. Uh -uh. It's fine. Don't worry about that. Remember, most of the time, like I said, 
we only use certain uh, 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 cumulative probabilities, which are your one minus one minus alpha, we all we always concentrate on 10, 95, and that will be that one, Shit, yeah. and 99. So only mm -hmm. those ones. So we'll most of the time this column you will never ever even use. Okay, all right. Well, then we'll that's use fine. One of those. Um, so 0, 0,1, 0, 0,05, 0, 0,03, and 0, 0,01. And sometimes you might also use that one, but it's very rare that you will find where we use 0, 0,05 because then it means you would have been given 0, 0,0 99% uh, where you will have to calculate 99 divided by 2 or oh, 0, 0,01 divided by 2, which will give you that. But it's very rare that you will use that column and this one. Okay, now then I should be fine. Well, like I said, let's. Yeah, let's see how it goes today and then I'll, I'll yes. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Okay. Any other question, comments? Nothing. Okay, so let's quickly recap on what we did the last week past, just to bring our minds to the same topic that we've learned. We we know that uh the purpose of the three sessions is to understand the basic concepts when it comes to in confidence intervals. We also wanted to learn how to construct a confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known and also when it is unknown. And today we're going to look at constructing the confidence interval for the population proportion. And I'm going to also include one terminology which we already have been calculating it and using it but we've never defined that which is the margin of error and uh, so that if you get questions on that you know what those are what is a margin of error and how do we calculate it so the past week we looked at where the population standard deviation is known and we know that with that, the assumption says the population standard deviation will be given and the population will be normally distributed. And we use this formula, which is the point estimate plus or minus the critical value div uh, multiplied by the standard error, which our point estimate is our sample mean and our critical value because the population standard deviation is known. We use the Z table and we find the critical value by using Z alpha divided by two where alpha is the value we find from the confidence level, which is one minus alpha. And when we divide the value of alpha by two, we find the probability and we go and find that probability on the table and look for the corresponding Z values. And those Z values becomes our critical values, which is our Z alpha divided by two multiplying that with the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your standard deviation, which is called also that the standard error. We learned that in the past weeks. Then uh, last Saturday, we learned about the confidence intervals for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown. And we also learned that when the population standard deviation is unknown, they would give you the sample standard deviation. And your population should also be normally distributed. And if it's not normally distributed, the sample size needs to be large enough. And we know that with the uh, critical value for uh, where the population standard deviation is unknown, we go to the T table. And we know when we find that critical value, we use T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. And we know that our degrees of freedom is N minus one. <clears throat> and that will give us the critical value when we go to the table. And the formula to find confidence intervals, it's plus minus or oh, the point estimate plus minus the critical value times the standard error. And you must always, always remember that the plus and, plus and minus the minus gives you the lower 
the lower limit and the plus gives you the upper limit. So if the question asks you to find the lower limit, you know that you just use the minus side and, and, and calculate your lower limit. If it asks for an upper limit, you use the plus sign to calculate the upper limit. Otherwise, we know that our confidence intervals are, broke, um, are the limits in terms of the lower limit and the upper limit as well. And we learned how to find the critical value on the T-table. Just to refresh our mind, at the top, we look at the upper tail area of the table to look for the probability at the top of the table. And we look for the degrees of freedom at the or, or on the left side of the table. And where they both meet, that's where you will find your critical values. Different to how you find the critical value with the Z table. Remember with the Z table, when you have a Z table, we use our Z values, which are at the top and the bottom. So the probability we find on the table, we go out and out to find the Z value, whereas with the student T table, we go in, we don't go out, we go in the table to find the critical value inside the table by using the degrees of freedom and the probability. And that's what we did the last time, and we looked at the exercise as well on how we calculate the confidence interval. Today, we're going to continue and look at confidence interval for the proportion. And when we look at the confidence interval for the proportion, we need to remember the following. So, and confidence interval estimate of the proportion can also be calculated by using the sample point estimate, which also will give you some uncertainties. And we know, remember from the sampling distribution, we know that if we don't get the sample proportion, they would have given us observation satisfying the sample proportion divide by the sample size. So they will give us the X and the sample size and we can calculate this sample proportion. So with confidence interval, our standard error will from the sampling distribution, remember? So if I can go back, remember with the other uh, for example, with uh, the mean, we always use the same uh, uh, sampling error. But when it comes to the proportion, you need to bear in mind that in the sampling distribution, when we were doing sampling distribution, because at that point we knew what the population proportion is, we were using the standard error as such. When we do confidence intervals, because we do not know the population, the population proportion value, and that is what we're trying to estimate to find where does it fit in or where does it falls between those limits, whether in the limits will include the population proportion because we don't know it. Then we use the sample proportion to calculate the standard error. So it means on the confidence interval, when we multiply the critical value with the standard error, our standard error will be the standard error calculated using the, pop the sample proportion, not the population proportion. Okay, so similar, we're going to continue with confidence interval. We know that it's point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. So for the confidence interval where the we calculate in confidence interval for the proportions, the formula will be our point estimate plus or minus our critical value times the standard error. Now our point estimate will be our sample proportion plus or minus because we're using the proportion always, always, always. For the proportion, we always use the Z values. So it means the critical value of the proportion, we go to the cumulative standardized normal distribution table to find the critical value. Times the standard error, which is our 
square root of your sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion divided by n. And that is how we're going to find the confidence interval for the proportion. Let's look at an example. A random sample of 100 people shows that 25 are left-handed. Form a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of the left-handers. Sometimes how will you know what question is this? Because then they talk about confidence interval. When they don't mention anything about the mean, the standard deviation, you must know that you are dealing with proportion. And sometimes also keywords in the question will give you guide in terms of whether you need to calculate the uh, confidence interval for the proportion or confidence interval for the mean. So for this one, it says 95% confidence interval for the true proportion. So it means now we're doing the proportion. So if I'm doing the proportion and I know what my formula looks like, no, sorry, uh, I know that my formula is our P plus or minus Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is one minus P, uh, P times one minus P divided by N. If I know that, I need to make sure that in this question, I am given my sample proportion. So reading the question, I can see that I have my N, and I have my X. So therefore it means I'm able to calculate my P, which is my X divided by N. Therefore my P will be 25 divided by 100, which is 0, 0,25. That is my proportion. <clears throat> and then I can also go and find my critical value because my critical value is Z alpha divided by two, and I know that my 0, 0.95 is the same as one minus alpha, where alpha will be equals to 0, 0.05, because alpha, if I bring it this side, it becomes a positive alpha, and if I take 0, 0.95 to the other side, I have one minus 0, 0.95, therefore it is one minus 0, 0.95 gives me 0, 0.05. And then I take this, I need to divide it by two. So alpha divided by two will give me 0, 0,0250. If I don't know my critical value by now of 95, then I take that value and I go to the Z table, go to the Z table on the negative side, because in the negative side, that's where I find small probabilities. And there is my 0, 0,025. I go out. It corresponds to minus 1,9. And when I go up, minus 1,9. And when I go up, my last digit is 6. So therefore, my critical value is minus 1,96 or 1,96 in this instance. So therefore, I know that my Z alpha divided by 2 is 1,96. So since I know that, then I can start calculating my substituting into the equation. Oh, sorry about that. Let me write it somewhere. Z alpha divided by 2, which is 1,96. So I just use my formula that I know, substitute into the equation. My P is 25 divided by 100, and I know that it's 0, 0,025, plus or minus my critical value. I just did find my critical value of 1,96 times the, our P. I've already simplified it, which is 0, 0,25. 1 minus 0, 0,25 is 0, 0,75 divided by 100. And I just calculate uh, the standard error uh, and I find that my standard error is 0, 0,0433 multiplied by 1,96. And I can split it into two because I'm looking for my lower boundary or my lower interval 
O limit and my upper limit. And simplify the equation 0 0.25 minus 1.96 1, 1 times 0, 0,043 gives me 0, 0,1651 and 0, 0,3349. And that is how you find the confidence interval for the proportion. And you can write it as such as well. by relating it to the population proportion. And any question? If there are no questions, then we can look at the exercise. This is how you interpret. I'm not going to go into interpretation because you do not need to know about how you interpret. Let's look at an uh, one of the exercise. According to a recent report by the Census Bureau, 26% of single male household own stock, bonds, and mutual funds. Although Census Bureau estimates are based on a very large sample, for convenience, assume that this result is based on a random sample of a thousand single male household. The 99% confidence interval for the proportion of all single male households that own stock, bonds, and mutual fund is. So they're asking us to find a 99% confidence interval for the proportion. So how do I know that I need to be doing for the proportion? It's because in the question they Give, tell, they gave me the hint, and when I read the statement, I've never saw anything that has to do with the mean or the standard deviation. I'm given a 26%, therefore I am also told that this is uh, comes from a large sample, so that is my sample proportion. I'm also given my N, so I don't even have to calculate my sample proportion because they have given it to me. All I need is the formula sample proportion plus or minus the critical value alpha divided by two times the standard error my standard error sample proportion one minus sample proportion divide by n now i need to go find my 99 percent confidence interval Finding the 99% confidence interval, I know that if 0, 0,99 is equals to 1 minus alpha. So therefore, alpha will be equals to 0, 0,01. And I need alpha divided by 2. So it's 0, 0,01 divided by 2, which will give me... Let me quickly open my calculator. It will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,0025. Okay, thank you. Let me do this. It should be 0, 0,0005. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yes. So the answer is, sorry, 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 sorry. The answer is 0, 0,005, right? Yes. Okay. So now taking that, we need to go in, we need to go to the table and go find, Oh, sorry. We need to go to the Z table and go find 0, 0,005 on the table. Let's go to the Z table. Let's look for 0, 0,005 inside here. So... I am going to stick with that last one. 
which is 0, 0,04, because if I round it off correctly, this is way past 0, 0,05. So that will be minus 2.58. So my, my critical value is 2.58. So my critical value here will be plus or minus 2.58, or we can just leave it as 2.58. You don't even have to worry about plus or minus. So now, since I have my critical value, I can just substitute into the formula. Substituting my P is 26%, so therefore it is 0, 0,26 plus or minus my critical value, I just found it. It's 2.58 times my standard error, which is 0 0.26 times 1 minus 0 0.26. 0 0.26 divide by my N was 1,000, close bracket. We go find, let's find the standard error. Calculate that side first. I just want to do it on my calculator. You can also do it on your side so that we can see if we get the same answer. I just want to bring it close by. So doing this side first, the square root first, square root of point. I'm going to, since I'm using this calculator, it's got a fraction. It makes life easy to uh, 0.26 times 1 minus 0.26. Close bracket, go down and put the 1,000. And say equal, and I get I'm going to keep only four decimals at this point, um, 0, 0,0139. So yeah, I have 0 0.26 plus or minus 2.58 times 0. Point... Now I need to go back to my calculator because I forgot all the digits. Zero one three nine. Since I'm keeping only four decimals, so now I can just calculate the other side. I multiply my answer, multiply by two point five eight equal zero point. 0358. I'm going to keep three decimals, uh, four decimals. 03357. Let me write it first. 0 0.035. Uh, I'm writing it wrong. I think it was 0. Yes, I'm writing it right. 0 0.035558 and that is 0 0.26. Now I can split it into two, which then it will be 0 0.26 minus 0 0.0358 and this side will be 0 0.26. 26 plus 0 0.0358. And 
like many of us, we find it easy to do the plus first, and we find plus 0.626 equal 0 0.2958. 0. 0.2958. So I must remember that this is the size 0. 0.2958. And I must do the same on the minus side. Do the same. You can say it is 0. 0.26 minus 0. 0.0358 equals 0. 0.2242. 2242 0 0.2242 because I ran it off quickly you will you will see where my challenge is with this because of when I am leaving all the digits and rounding off quickly you might find that you're missing out on certain digits as well so the answer is number Three, as you can see that the rest of the other question are not even way too close. Um, just to do it again using the full calculator. Those who have this type of a calculator, I can just show you. You can do this whole step, the first step on your calculator, but you need to be very careful when you do that. So 0.26. Minus, I'm going to start with the minus first, 2.58 times, I must do my square root of my fraction, which is 0.26 times 1 minus 0.26, close bracket, go down, put a thousand there and then go use my arrow to go to the end. So I must just make sure that I'm right at the end and I put my closing bracket. And if I want to see the whole equation, I can just scroll, 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 scroll and see that I have captured all the answer correctly and then press the equal sign and that is your answer. And if you look at that is added a one because they rounded off quickly when they were doing the calculations. So you just need to be very careful as well. So let's say we want to do the plus and also check. So I just use my arrow to go and change the minus to a plus. Go back one step, hit put the plus and equal to find my answer. And the answer is 0 0.29. Five eight. So this one they, they also didn't round off correctly because it should say five eight, and that's how you use your calculator and how you find the confidence intervals manually. Any questions before I give you your own exercise to do without my help, and then we can see how we're doing. Any question? No questions. I do. I still have people in the room because I might be talking to myself. Oh, we're still here. See, you still here. Okay, so here is your exercise. I know it's a long sentence. Identify what you have. We're still doing the proportion. I'm going to write the formula here. P plus or minus Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is P times one minus P divided by N. Remember to go find your critical value. Um, if you still remember the table that I shared with you the last time of the critical values, you can still use that table even today without going to the table so often. If you have it, 
you need to have it actually you need to have it close by where it shows you your alpha divide by two values where it says for a 90 percent it's one comma six four five for a 95 percent it's one comma nine six for a 99 percent it's two comma five eight and i think for an 80 percent it's something so you need to keep that from a uh, uh, table close by so that you don't always constantly go to the table to find the critical value you can just apply it. you can use the critical value tables when you use the t table because with the t you cannot memorize it this way okay so with me stop talking you do the exercise when you're done you can post your answer in the chat let me open the chat so that i can also see huh I thought you already answered the question, okay? So <clears throat> let, let us know when you are stuck so we can help. Okay, I see answers are coming through. Any anyone who's lost need assistance? Mm. Uh, 
Eh? Fiso and Slalid, they are on the same page. They say it's option three. And somebody else as well. Liked. Others? Are you, st you still need more time? Just a minute or so, please. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Okay. Who wants to do it with me? You are given a thousand, which is N, and you are given our X, which is 230. So we need to find P, which is X divided by N, right? Which is 230 divided by 1000, which is equals to our P is, since you guys worked it out. 0, 0,23. 0, 0,23. Then we also need to go find our critical value, which is Z alpha divided by two. We know that it is Z alpha divided by two. Our alpha is 0, 0,05. And Z alpha divided by two, which will be 0, 0,0250, which means our critical value for this will be 1,96. 1,96. Nine six. I don't have to go to the table to go find it. So let's substitute into the formula. So we set our P is zero comma two three plus or minus a ninety five percent is one comma nine six times the square root of zero comma two three times one minus zero comma two three divide by our n of a thousand have you calculated 
these values before the plus uh, after the plus or minus or not? Yes, that's zero comma zero two six eight three five. Wait. Slowly, zero comma zero two six zero eight three. Um, well, I, I, I kept a lot of decimals. Um, I yeah. don't know if no, I can correct then it's fine, 0 0.23. Have I wrote it right? That's the most important part. Yes, you have. Yes. So then we split it. We start with the minus side first. And then we go to the plus side. Zero two six zero eight three. And what do you get as an answer? Zero point two three nine. Zero point two zero three nine. And on the other side, we can leave it as three decimals, actually, because we have three decimals. So oh. that will be 0, And the answer is option three. Okay, so that's how you answer confidence intervals for the proportion. Now, I want to introduce what we call a margin of error or what we call a sampling error. A sampling error, which is also the same as margin of error, uh, is the amount of precisions in the estimate for the proportion that we use. And we either add it or subtract it from the point estimate to form a confidence interval. By now you should know what I'm talking about because when we have for confidence interval for the mean, we have X bar plus or minus the critical values times the standard error or x bar plus or minus t alpha divided by 2 and the critical error. And for the proportion we have, oh, we just did it now. How do I get it wrong? Plus or minus z alpha divided by 2 times P1 minus P divided by N. So, in terms of what I just said, is the amount added or subtracted? So, therefore, it means this, this, oh, not cross out. This, this is what we call the margin of error, the sampling error because we add it to the point estimate or subtract it from the point estimate in order for us to find that precision 
of estimate. That's all what I needed to share with you. How do we calculate it? You've been calculating it. This is your margin of error. So you've calculated your margin of error there, and you find that is 0, 0.026083. And that's how you calculate the margin of error. And you can do it for all the questions. That is your margin of error, 0, 0.0358. And that's how you will calculate the margin of error. It is your critical value times your point estimate. In terms of the mean, it is just that gives you your margin of error. There is nothing fancy or nothing technical that you need to know about it. You've been doing it. You just need to know that the values after the plus or minus calculates your margin of error. You can also do it for the proportion, calculate the margin of error. With that, I'm not going to do any exercise to ask you calculate the margin of error because we've been doing it. All I just want you to do is go through the activities and answer all the questions. So here, all the activities that are following up are a mixture of today's session, Saturday's session, the past Saturday's session, and the past Wednesday's session, that other Wednesday's session. So we'll go through each and every one of them until our time is up at two o'clock or if we finish early we can go home early and enjoy our weekend this is your first exercise when you have your answer you can post it on the chat if you need help shout i'm gonna time all the exercises you'll have five minutes for each exercise so this you have five minutes if you want to take a break in between, you are more than welcome to go and make yourself coffee. In Cape Town, it's very cold today. It was raining. Uh, so I will will do a feedback at five past one. You know, when you've killed someone mm. and you see them. <laughs> Close your eyes.
Okay, are we winning? Yes. Do you want more time or we can do the activity now? Let's do it. Okay. What are we given? We're given X and N. We're given X and N. So our N is 200 and our X is 34. So it means we need to calculate P, which is X divided by N. 34 divided by 200. What do you have? Zero comma one seven. Zero comma one seven. We need to find our critical value. By now, you should know what the critical value is when we use proportion. What is our critical value? Z alpha divided by two. One comma nine six. One comma nine six. Okay, so we need to substitute the values into the formula. Okay, our P is 0, 0,17 plus or minus our critical value. 1,96 times 0, 0,17 times 1 minus 0, 0,17 divide by our n of 200. Calculating the marginal error. What did you find? Calculating your critical value times your standard error? Zero comma zero four two. Did I catch it right? Zero five zero comma five two one. Five two one, not four. Yes. Okay, so let's split it. 0, 0,17 minus 0, 0,0521. And on the upper limit, 0, 0,17 plus 0, 0,0521. And what is the answer that we get? 0, 0,1179. And on the upper limit? 0, It looks like it's that one. Because this one is 12, this is 10, this is 12. So it might be that they rounded off too quickly. Somewhere when they were doing some of the calculations. Especially when they calculated the standard error. I'm going to assume. Let's see if I use the standard error of 0.17 times 1 minus 
0.17 divide by 200. So if they rounded off quickly, they would have said this is, they kept it at two decimal, then they would have said this is 0 0.02. So it will be three, 0 0.03. So 0 0.03 times 0 0.196 and 96 equals, and if I add 0 0.17, still, the no because they have two two three three one which is not even two two yeah okay i don't know unless the digits here they were more i just want to double check how how do they get to to those digits that we can't get to them. Okay, let me do the whole equation. 0.17 minus 1.96 times 0.17 open bracket 1 minus one seven close bracket down to two hundred okay I don't know I feel sorry for you guys writing these papers and exams and all that because all this, I get them from your past exam papers and all that, your past tutorial letters. Okay, so that is one. Let's go to number two. Using the same information. Now, instead of using a, instead of using a 90, 95, use a 99. So a ninety nine would mean our Z alpha divided by two would be our alpha here will be zero comma zero one. And if we divide that by two, we'll have zero comma zero zero five. I have to double check my story. Zero comma zero zero five. I think we did do, do this. We found that it was two point five eight. So it is two point five eight. So we know what our critical value is. We just substitute back into into that formula that we had so which is p plus or minus And since we calculated the P, you don't have to go back and calculate it again because it's the same equation or question. So we know that our P was 0, 0,17 plus or minus 2.58 times 0 0.17, 1 minus 0 0.17. 
divide by 200. And you must be very careful. It says they're only looking for the upper limit. With this one, I'm just going to give you two minutes because we're repeating. Are we winning? Are we happy? Do you have the answer? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, if we calculate the 
I'm not going to go and calculate the margin of error and all that. Let me just use my calculator and see if you guys did it. You, we all have the same answer. So we only do the plus sign because we're looking for the upper limit. So if I press equal, do you all get the same answer? As yes. Yes. So which is option number four. So you only do 0 0.17 plus the worst part is I didn't calculate the margin of error. You can do that quickly. Which is just deleting the rest of the other questions. Which is 0, 0,0154. I think you deleted the two before the decimal point as well. Did I? Zero point zero six eight five. And that should give you the answer. There we go. Okay, so next question, next exercise. Do you know what you need to do on this one? Now, this will need to be used with the T table, right? This will need to use the T table because the population standard deviation is no, is unknown. We are given S. So you will need to go find the critical value, which is T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1. So they say at 90%. So we know alpha will be 0, 0,10 at 90%. Then T will be 0, 0,10 divided by 2. And the degrees of freedom, N is 100 minus 1. So therefore, T will be 0, 0,05 and 99. So you will need to go find the critical value on the T table. I can just assist with that. And like we discussed, the T table, sometimes they use three decimals, sometimes two decimals. So I think it's best to use three decimals for some reason, uh, not four decimals. So, but on the our one, we need to go look for 0, 0.05 but our degrees of freedom should be 99. So it will be on the second page. We know that we are on this column so that we don't lose track of where we are. We need 99, 99, 90, 90, 90. Okay, we're gonna lose that. We just highlight it and so that we don't lose that. So our 99. And that is your critical value. Which is 1.6604. Write it. 1.66. Zero four. So you need to go find using
and that is your formula. Substitute the values and Are we winning? Yes.
Okay. Do we have an answer? We've been quiet for some time. So let's work it out. Our mean is 200. Come on. Critical value, we did find it. It was 1,6604 times our standard error, which is 5 divided by the square root of 100. 200 plus or minus, if I calculate the marginal error, or oh, the sampling error on one side, I get... 0, 0,8302. 0, 0,8302. 0, then I expand this 200 minus 0, 0,8302. And we do the same 200 plus 0, 0,8302. And on the lower limit, we get 200 minus 0, 0,8302. So 199.1698. And on the upper limit, It will just be two hundred point eight three zero two, which is option number two. Okay, so now let's do some complex questions. Remember what we did when we were doing the on Saturday past. We looked at one of the question where it was asking whether when we increase the confidence interval, does it narrow or expand? And when we increase the N or decrease N, does it narrow or does it expand? We remember that. No? Do we still remember those? So to answer this question, you need to remember all those things. You need to remember that. Your confidence intervals, when it's big, or your confidence level of 90, 95, 99, as to compare it to the others, whether the 99, the confidence level becomes or the confidence interval becomes wider or does it become narrower so to do that i think we did one of the exercises where we looked at two scenarios where it has the confidence intervals are the same so let's take this as an example at 95 we have 0, 0,11 and 0, 0,22 at 99, uh, let's write, I'm going to write it on that slide, 0, 0,1179 and 0, 0,2221. I hope I will remember all that. So we have at 99, the confidence level is 0, 0,17. Uh, we didn't calculate the other side. I'm just going to use the same information that we have here because I didn't we didn't calculate the minus on this one. So we find that this side is 0, 0,2385. Uh, let's quickly do the minus 0, 0,17.17 minus 0 0.0685, we get 0, 0,1015. So for 95, 
because I'm only going to work with the two to demonstrate. For 95, we got 0 0,1179. 0 0,1179. And on the other side, we got 0, 0,2121. Now, if I take these two uh, confidence levels, and I draw them. So I draw the first one and I say it is 0, 0,10. I'm just going to use the, the last two digits. And this is 0, 0,24. And I draw this and say this is my 99%. That is my 99. Looking at my 95, it says it's 0, 0,1. 1, 2. So 0, 0,12 will be somewhere inside and 0, 0,22 will be somewhere inside as well. So therefore it means if I draw this, this will be my 95%. So since 99 is bigger than 95, therefore if I'm going to have a 90, so 90 will be somewhere in between as well. So this will be my 90. So then what it tells me is a 99%, the limit will be bigger than a 95, and a 95 limit will be bigger than 90. I hope you remember all this. So we're going to take this information that we have without without the, the, the numbers, just to remember that 99 is bigger than 95 and 95 is bigger than, is bigger than 9. So I'm going to draw it here. So we draw that here. So we say this is 99, this is 95, and this is, this is 90. That's what we have. So it means when we look at A, B, and C, we need to visualize it in terms of 99, 95, and 90 to match the confidence with the values. So whichever one that has a bigger or a smaller, uh, a smaller starting point will be our 99. And whichever has the bigger, uh, uh, interval so this will be small and big small big small big so let's go between 96 196 and 194 and 196 which one is smaller which is this so 94 is smaller so then it means 94 194 will be our 90 nine percent because 194 is smaller than 196 and 196 so we haven't determined which 196 we matching with another one because we know if this is a number line we know that this is zero and this is 200 94 will be here 96 will be there so we can already identify those so we can also identify which one between the two? So 94. So therefore, 196.06 will be this one. 196.06 will be that one. And 196.70 will be that one. Because we know when we go in this way, we go into the bigger side. So therefore, without looking at the end, the ones at the end, but by looking at those ones, we can determine which one is 95, 99, and so forth. So if we look at the bigger side as well, we can see uh, nine, uh, 203 will be 203 and 205. So this will be 205, and this will be 203, and this will be 203. We just need to determine which one is which now. Uh, we know that 30 will be before.
94. Before 94, so this will be 30 and this will be 94. And as you can see, I've already uh, visualized which one is which. So this one, I did it already by looking at the smallest, the lower limit. So already I can see um, 95 is that one, that is 95, and this will be your 90. And then I can find which one is the correct info. So which match the confidence estimates with the pro appropriate confidence level. A is 95, so this one won't be correct. That will be correct. This won't be correct. That won't be correct. That one will be correct. So we move to the next one, B. We only have those two. That won't be correct, but this is correct. So therefore, our answer is option five. So you just need to apply the theory that you know, or things that you know, in terms of the confidence level and confidence intervals. Any questions? If there are no questions, you have another exercise to do. Pay attention to the question. So this is what we have been given today. When you have the answer, you can post it on the chat. Um, sorry, ma'am, just to yes. go back to exercise six. Um, so what I did is because I didn't want to visualize, <laughs> I just subtracted the two values from each other and then I compared um, which from big, smaller, smallest, and then thus assumed my 95, my 99, 95, and 90%, which is almost the same. But yeah, I just wanted to just get your opinion in terms of doing a subtraction of the upper limit minus the lower limit. So like, for example, for I just looked at the value for A, then I did 203.94 minus 196.06. And then for B, I did 205.18 minus 194.82. And then for C, I did 203.3 minus 196.7. And then I just compared my answers. Yes, yes. So you can do it that way as well because when you compare, we know that when we compare a 99 with a 90, a 99 will have a bigger value and a, a 90 will have a smaller difference between the intervals because they are too close to one another. Whereas with a 99, the intervals will be wide or big or wider. And this will be narrower. So also, if you compare a 99 and a 95, you will see that um, the the bigger the confidence level, the wider the the interval, and the smaller the confidence level, the smaller the interval will be. So you can you can you can use any method you want as long as you can remember that. Uh, if you visualize it, you will remember that the 99 will be bigger than 90 in terms of confidence level. So in math, to skin a cat, you can make use of any method. There are many ways. Okay, thank you. Okay. So there is your exercise.
Are we winning? Are we done? Still calculating. Are we done? Yes. Okay. So we are given X. We are given N. We know that our Z alpha divided by 2 for a 90% is... The only exception one comma six four five. It's one comma six four five. And we need to calculate our point estimate P plus or minus critical values Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is P times one minus P divided by N. Our P X divided by N seventy divided by hundred is equal to zero comma seven plus or minus one comma six four five times the square root of zero comma seven times one minus zero comma seven divide by 100. Margin sampling error or margin of error, 0, 0,7 plus or minus, what do we get? 
Zero comma zero seven. Zero comma zero seven five four. Zero comma zero seven five four. We all get that. Okay, we split it zero comma seven minus zero comma zero seven five four. And on the other side, we have zero comma seven plus zero comma zero seven five four. On the lower limit, we get zero comma six two four six. And on the upper limit, zero comma seven seven five four. Any questions? I think we are left with two more questions or one. Oh no, we have more. Okay, any question? If there are no questions, I think this one we did it. I might be wrong, I might be right. But if we didn't do it, there is your exercise. Do you know what you need to do here? Because this is not proportions. This is for the mean. Are you going to use Z or T? Um, I suspect Z. But what are we given in this question? Well, we're given the standard deviation, so. So what standard deviation is given? Sample, okay. So if we're given the sample standard deviation, which is S, then it means we're going to find T. T. You must read the question carefully. Remember, if you are given the sample standard deviation, we use T. And you will need to go and find your T alpha. So we use it 90, 99. So our alpha will be 0, 0,01. Therefore, our alpha divided by 2 will be 0, 0,005. And we are given our N. So our N minus one will be 30 minus one, which is 29, which is 29. Therefore, to find the critical value, so which is the critical value of 0, 0,005, and 29, we need to go to the table, the T table. So let's go to the T table. We're looking for 30, so we need to go to the next. Let's just reduce the table a little bit. At the top, we're looking for 0, 0,05. We must go. Uh, do you have a table with 0, 0,05? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So it's only for the 0, 0,75 that you might not have. So we need 29. Where are we? This is 29. So I've already highlighted everything next to 29 so let's move this a little bit bigger so that those with no tables can see so we know that we're using the last column so where they both meet two comma seven five six four 
two comma seven five six four. Let's just double check that. Seven five six four. Okay, so you can just substitute into the formula. Our mean and sample standard deviation respectively. So this is our mean, which is X bar. This is our standard deviation, which is S. So our mean is 90 plus or minus. Our critical value was 2.75. Six four times our standard error, which is eighteen, divided by the square root of our n thirty. Okay, we put calculator the sand. Assist with the calculations. 2.7564 times 18 divided by the square root of 30, which is my marginal error, is equal to 9.058. We can leave it at five days, four decimals. Since our answers are at four decimals, so we can leave it at four decimals. So if I round it correctly, it's five. So we add one, it's nine five. So 90 minus 9.0585 and 90 plus. 9.085. And the answer for this is 80.9415. Let's see. Do you also get the same answer as me? Let's see. Yes. Okay. So let's do the other side, which is the plus side. Ninety-nine point zero five eight ninety. No. This side we get ninety-nine point zero five eight five, which is which is cannot be that one this option two. And this is probably because of the number of decimals that they used when they were doing the answer. So I'll always look at the two last digits after the comma, just to give an idea in terms of 
um, the correctness of the answers as well. Because we get the same answer as that. So that will conclude today's session. Um, they, uh, is this one question, you can go ahead and do it yourselves. Uh, you must be very careful of this one as well when we do it because this one uses the population standard deviation. But that does not, uh, because what they're asking you actually is using a 90% of that statement that you have which one of those questions are or statement is correct is calculating correctly so you'll have to calculate the confidence level at 90 at 95 and at 99 and choose whichever one is not correct based on those statement and choose your answer there that is that one next one which is the last one i think we already did this if not um just also calculate the confidence interval of this question and then that's it so to, it we conclude by saying you have learned for the last three weeks or two weeks the basic concepts of confidence intervals how to construct the confidence interval for the population when the population standard deviation is known and when it is unknown You've learned how to construct the confidence interval for the proportion and also what them are and how to calculate the margin of error or sampling error. Um, and that concludes confidence interval. See you on Wednesday when we start with hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is known. If there's any other question that you want to post, now is your time. If there are no questions, then we can call it a day and enjoy the rest of your weekend.